Alrighty guys, both pistons are removed. I did label them which side was which. They look like perfect, like they haven't even been ran. I'll try to get out of the shadow a little bit so you can see. But yeah, it smells like old varnishy gas and this thing did sit with nasty varnish in it. Not sure the story on it. The crank feels pretty good. Checking the rods for up and down. They feel real nice. Checking this one, nothing really. A little bit of side to side, which is good. Crank feels pretty good. We'll spin it when we get it out. Um, maybe somebody did a top end and not the bottom end, maybe. So flip this thing up on its side, zip the plate off, and then obviously we'll mark which side is which and kind of where the bolts were and that sort of thing. Probably gonna leak some stuff out, so we should put a rag down. Let's see how much leaks out of this thing. Good, not terrible. And these are like five ace, I wanna say. loose. So I just put an arrow forward. I don't know which way that goes back on. Then. The notch is going to be on the intake side of the plate. Now I've got a couple little pieces of two by four guys so I can take the motor, tip it upside down and then zip all that stuff loose and out of there. And uh, We'll go from there. We'll need a 14 and a 12 for sockets. Oil pump should be cool, just like it is. But I just need some boards to kind of balance the bottom end on. Got it tipped upside down. Pulling this crankcase down. Gotta get my extension for those two. Or I made mean, four, sorry, four. The side bolts here. I've had a couple of these parts, so once you've once you've seen one, pretty much golden to see them all. Um, put all these bolts. Here. We got two with a fourteen on the PTO side. Oh, fell closely. Um, try to get a half inch driver. So, those out. Zip these out. Just kind of see what, what they did inside of here. Looks like I got a good pry point actually, right over here. See, those are the bigger ones. And then I take my screwdriver go in between here and I just lift up like that looks like somebody put some dowels holding it together a little bit crankshafts also Holding it a skosh. What I do now is I take my mallet. Make sure that it looks like they. 
glue the crankcase to the seals, so it's always ideal. See the inside of here? Doesn't look like they put uh, much sealer there. Um, from the looks of that, not much at all. And there's some nasty stuff in the bottom. But that is basically your oil pump drive right there runs off the crankshaft on liquids oil pump here water pump here so we'll get to clean this up later dull pins are in place yet i'm gonna take my crank let's take that out for a second yeah those seals look disgusting took this up slide these seals off I mean they're awfully awfully dry if they were done they look brand new though but I don't like it because I didn't do it bearings feel great no uh, no noise Rods feel good. So I'll set it back in this half here just to keep it straighter. Not really worried about, right now I'm not really worried about uh, straightening it so much um, because I just took it out, trapped it back in the case. For this, it's not a race build, so I'm not gonna take the crank out and true it up and do all that. It's gonna put it together. Um, like it was clean everything obviously but that's a disassembly um, on the super sport 440 see the whole table full of parts and it didn't take too long to get that apart now it's just uh, clean everything up real nice inspect everything you know get, get everything resealed up and slap it back in the chassis we're using permatex moto seal basically three bond um, on the lower half, crank and seals are set in on the upper half, nice and square in the grooves, alignment pins in, bolts are ready with a little bit of blue Loctite on them. So once he gets the case spread out with the sealant, we turn it upside down, set it on, align the oil pump drive, we turn until it sits flush, pop it on, throw the bolts in and start tightening them. With this stuff, you just need a thin layer it's very liquidy. Um, you want me to take that out of your hand? Or? <laughs> yeah, I need a little bit more right there. Do you? Or the cap. We should clean the cap off. It's all right. We did put a little bit of two cycle oil in the oil pump shaft bearing area uh, just for added assurity. And uh, we don't really need any sealant out there, so no need for that. And we just gotta get that side cooking. Yeah, it's more right there. Yeah, you should have enough. Oh, watch out, watch out, Oh, yeah, don't. Plenty. Oh, yeah. Good, real good. All right. And then we'll turn and set. You're good to go. Don't worry about that, that won't see nothing. Dude, that is the biggest pet for you. I know. This one I gotta clean. I know. Off. All right, ready? Take her before the oil can get on the glue. And then, yep, look like, look like it aligned on the oil pump. So, just start. Usually, guys, it won't let you put the case on if you don't have the oil pump drive lined up. So we're throwing bolts in, 12 mil. Yeah, see, that's not the, on these, you can't, uh, sometimes if you smear RTV all over the place, like over the whole case, you'll see it where it comes off. Okay. 
So you can tell, guys, we got it lined up because it's starting to squish out already. So we're just, be just going real lightly for now. And then I'll torque spec on all the little bolts. I would go 18 foot pounds. The two end caps go 25, 26, uh, and you'll be golden that way. And you always want to, as you're tightening this, you want to be rotating it. Never hurts to give the each end of the crank before this is tight a little mallet tap each way and wiggle it. That seats the bearings if there's a little bit of movement. Discrepancy. We're looking at the seals. Looks like everything's good there. Everything seemed to squeeze down. You don't really need to put any sealing guys on the on the seal edges. Um, it shouldn't. The clamping force of this crankcase should keep that all nice and sealed. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten all the bolts up and uh, flip this thing upside down. Alrighty guys, so base gaskets are on, pistons are going on. What we didn't we didn't show you on camera was we lubed up the bottom end through the bearing oil holes. There's four of those and we also did the lower rod bearings with two cycle oil. You want to put you know, a couple cc's worth of oil in each hole. You want to lubricate your wrist pin bearings and the rod on the top. We did install new Polaris wrist pin bearings. You can inspect your old ones most of the time and just look for pitting, grooves, broken rollers. Somebody had this apart and you can see there's two different wrist pin bearings. Usually you want a bearing with the most rollers is better than one with fewer rollers. Well, the more rollers, the less strain Str on the bearing. Right. The more strain on the rollers, but the rollers don't carry as much. Right. If you have less rollers, there's, there's, there's more, more strain, strain on each one. And on the cage. It's like right. So, yes, this works, but they are different. And it's something that if somebody looked at it, they might not catch this if they don't know what they're looking for. These are actually in pretty good shape. I swear to God, somebody rebuilt this right before I bought it. Not so. correctly, but they did rebuild right. it. Right. Now, so. if you look at these... Yeah. Both the same. Ton of rollers. Yep. Longer Kate. Longer width of the rollers. Yeah. The roll the rollers are what really matters. And if you guys have seen our other videos on doing top ends, um, this is a typical Weisco. Weiscos have numbers right across the middle of the domes. That's how you can tell a Weisco from a normal other piston or aftermarket brand. Um, so the numbers are like a part number in a way. Sometimes they say the bore size. This one I don't think does unless it's 67 or 72 i'm not sure anyways i always keep one clip in if i'm going to reuse a piston in this case uh ring pins you can see them here always on the intake side the intake side on the, any of these engines is going to be on the oil pump side or the impulse side so when we go to put the pistons on we always put them with the pins to the intake and then i put the clip in obviously after we slide it on so we're probably going to do that circlip on that side so that piston's done, then focus on the mag side, that's done, then we don't have to worry about it. And here's your typical circlip. So we're going to take a little pick device and we're going to get rowdy with it. These actually, Mark, these are way nicer than those thick ski do ones. Yeah. You guys so should have saw video Mark video. had to stress his fingers and that yeah. screwdriver to the max. Skidoos are super thick, very, very t tough, I guess if you want to call it, but... Oh, terrible tough. Love doing the players, but the, the Skidoos, there's actually a special tool I've learned over the years that makes life yeah. a lot easier. So late easier. we've become so smart. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier. But yeah, I bet a Skidoos is almost a half size bigger. And generally, I'm put a rag over it. Take a, yeah, I usually take a clean piece of paper towel and kind of put it over there, 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 and there, there, anywhere where that 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 clip could just enter the bottom end and maybe. In this not. case, a semi-dirty rag that has been shaken of lint. You yeah, want lint. We checked it in your bottom end. So there's going to be, I'll probably show you guys a little bit on the other side. It's going to be a lot easier to see. These Weiscos are goofy because 
they had this half dished ridge on the side of the piston so like it makes putting the circlip in kind of difficult. Oh. Had to adjust our thermostat. So, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just take my light after I get the circlip seated, and that looks good. My other side's in, so we're all good. And our pins are on the intake side. So we'll move on to the magneto side. This one slides in real nice. Oh wow, yeah, that's slipping really nice. <laughs> Rag? Yep. The rag. The rag or the cloth. Commence the rig. Commence the rag so you don't get the clip in there. Unfortunately, guys, you're probably not going to be able to see this very well because there's a bad lighting in here anyways. I'm dumping over impacts and stuff, so. What we got to do here is we're going to take the clip and we'll orient the, the opening right close to that thing there my thumb over it. I go like that. But now I'm on a room. Just gotta go a little bit further in the rotation so that the hook just past that opening. Get my pick behind it. And I'm putting pressure down and pop it. Good there. There should be. So Mark can shine his light in there. I'm checking. I heard it actually snap in. And she's all seated. Pull our rag away. And, uh, double check our pistons are the right way, which they are. Rings are all good. Like I said, these pistons probably have no runtime, maybe like a few minutes. So that is putting the top end halfway together. Next thing is we hone the cylinders. I'll show you what they look like now. Things look freaking awesome. Just gotta clean a little bit of the intake ports out. But... These things look great. Got a nice cross hatch back in them. We got the one cylinder slid on. We're just oiling up the magneto side cylinder. I did stamp it with an M there, or engraved it, so I knew which side is which. I just do that as just a oh. habit when I take stuff apart. Um, Sharpie works if you're not gonna wash it in anything too strong, but I prefer scribing or stamping or putting a number one on one of them. I, you know, whatever you think, but just some way of remembering. Um, that hone really, see that did a really nice job just to get the glaze uh, put a cross hatch back in the cylinder so we'll slide this one on the uh piston I'll zoom you guys in there a little bit so you can see got some yamma lube there doesn't really matter what you're going to use you know two cycle of oil of some kind as long as she's lubed yeah as long as she's lubed yeah, I just gotta get a little bit on this cylinder. You're, you're already committed. I'm already committed to this. A little bit. Oh yeah. You know, a nice amount of oil there because oil is what keeps the rings from touching the bore. And our intake with the oil injection or the bridge, you know, that's where you look for. Pins are on that side. We just go here and we a little squeeze and there she goes. Oh, mine too, one on nice. And that's all there is to it, guys. Uh, four nuts on each cylinder. There's four. Five, four. 
And dude, no like rusty cross threaded threads either too. Just cause it's been a part. Yeah, I know. Which is nice. I don't know. It had 100 to 120 when I checked it for compression. So I'm sure these rings weren't seated because they didn't have a cross hatch. And so we'll see if we can ring seat. I'm sure it'll have about 20. It ran though, guys. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna be trying to blind man bluff this, this one nut. Cause there's gonna be some fan shrouds that gotta go on first so we can't exactly put that on then tighten the bolts for the nuts I mean. With this, I usually just take an open end or a box end wrench, crisscross pattern. Torque spec on this is about 24 to 26 foot pounds. So 25 You'd be correct. Sir. Or one the median grunt. of or the one grunt. Yeah, a couple grunts. It takes more than a grunt usually. So I got them snug there. Spin it over again. I think it feels great. So now I'm going to go for the, the full Monty. The, the glory shot. So I might. Do you want to go Hulk and hold or and hold it or me hold it or you want me to tighten and you hold it? Oh. I got her. All right. I got a little. I had to loosen things myself, dude, with the double wrench. It was tough. You ready? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yep. That's about how hard it came off, too, so we're good there. Uh, next thing we'll probably do is do the stator and, uh, Get that top shroud piece on, which is right here. So we'll throw this back on there. The fun part is getting it back around. Oh, an optical rod, dude. Take ourselves a little screwdriver. And let's get rowdy with the ground. Let's just get rowdy with the ground. Shove it through. All right, guys. So putting the exhaust fan shroud on the exhaust side. I'm actually going to reuse those fiber. Well, they're not really fiber gaskets. They're more exhaust material, non-flammable stuff. This is the stuff you get in those kits. I don't really like these, so I'm gonna reuse the old ones. I like those a lot better, but we'll keep these for something. You can use them, but for me, I just, I don't prefer them, so. This Y pipe is just greasy. Right. Okay, so you can't, you gotta put that piece on them first. All right, guys, we're finding out some interesting things here. I'll show you a thing or two because I learned a thing or two once. Anyways, <clears throat> so we had this this fan adapter shroud thingy that has to go on now because we cannot access the bolts later. So another thing I hope you put on. Okay, so we got that on. Gasket here, gasket there. I wiped all that off for the most part, just dried them off. I'll we'll put this on next. And then gaskets on the exterior. Get that on there good. And then we 
we got the wine pipe itself. Put that on there. We'll find the brass nuts that we took off. Start these back on there. Always smart that they use brass on the exhaust so they don't weld themselves tight. Ain't that nice? I would just use something that would totally weld something more. Really, every other manufacturer does. Yeah. Alrighty guys, back with uh, day two, 440 Super Sport engine build. Uh, I'm gonna put the intake side on now. Some birds definitely are mad in here today, um, but we'll have to just do, deal with them, I guess. I'm gonna leave the intake gaskets on the back side of the metal uh, fan shroud. They're like brand new. I'm not gonna peel them off and disturb them. Everything's clean on the cylinder sides. I'm gonna put some Permatex Moto Seal around the rubber intake boots stick those on and put the bolts in uh, just to put a little extra sealant there on the rubber uh, intakes exhaust and everything's on the flywheel I have to tighten the flywheel nut but I slid that all back on things got nice compression um, the heads are on just gonna put the uh, obviously the last four fasteners when the top fan shroud goes on but uh, yeah we're, we're getting there I'll take them right. just gonna wipe this area so they're clean and then wipe this area. Get all that stuff off so it's got a nice clean surface to stick to. You can see the gaskets are still good there. Not going to worry too much about that. Over nice and tacky. So that's going to go just like that. Put that moto seal. This stuff's some pretty goopy stuff, so you gotta be careful with it. You don't need much of this, just a little film of it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
mixing it up a little bit. Anyways, we'll just final snug those up uh, afterward. That'll pretty much be it for the intakes. Uh, we're making sure that two, um, that the backside connected properly with that one fastener where the two fan shrouds meet. The intake side is going to go behind it with the threaded portion. The exhaust shield is going to go on top of that with a bolt through it. So this piece can go on obviously before these because then you can't tighten the bolt if you put it on. You know, if you go to put it on after these are on, well, it's not going to happen. So, just got to finish tightening those bolts here. And then I'll work on finding some oil lines and replacing those. And then I will button up the recoil side and then the fan shroud. Ended up putting a new uh, recoil rope in, guys, while I had the recoil off. Um, I put a little bit of lubricant in there yet. But we have some Polaris bulk. Recoil rope here, probably a good, I don't know, 50 feet or so. So, just wanted to do that quick before I put the recoil on. And a little bit of lubricant spray in there. And should be good to go. I have videos on how to replace the recoil ropes on these Polaris's, so I didn't really record that portion of it. If you guys want to go see that done there's a video on the channel about putting on a players just like this so starter cup is on we tighten those three bolts there now we don't tighten the fan shroud until we get the recoil housing in place Grip there. So now I'll put some bolts in here, zip this on, then we tighten the fan shroud afterwards to kind of pinch around the um, recoil housing. There we go. stays right there. He's snugged up. Like I said, once again, you want to torque those about 18 foot pounds.
guys ever buy one of these without a fan shroud on it and the, and the person selling it doesn't have that top cover on it? Prepare to uh, have problems. Because I don't know why guys will run them with that shroud off. And that's bad. That's, they will overheat. And there you have it, guys. Oh, yeah, a little nice compression. Just gotta hook the oil lines up and the motor plate back on, and we're golden. Let's do a little bit of final cleaning up on this fan show. I wiped it down a little bit, but there's always some stuff stuck to them. But not too bad, guys, on this one. Something you could probably do at home. Uh, with very basic tools, you know, flywheel puller definitely helps uh, to remove flywheels. That's one thing if you're going to get into engine rebuilding on snowmobiles. Clutch pullers and flywheel pullers, uh, you're going to need them. So, hope you enjoyed and maybe you learned something from the video uh, and you get the confidence to tackle one of these jobs yourself. We will work on the chassis soon, getting that motor stabbed in there and uh, go from there. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and comment down below what you guys think we should do uh, with this sled build, uh, anything to look out for, and if you guys have any tips along the way, be sure to leave them in the comments.